Well, we were conducting a fishery survey on the Oconee River in 1991 for the relicensing of Sinclair Dam when we the, uh, we collected these five large fish, you know, members of the sucker family that we could not identify. So we contacted some uh, local uh, experts on this group of fish and conducted an investigation and uh, pieced together gradually over a period of a couple of years exactly what this fish was. Well, it turns out that the robust red horse was actually initially described by the naturalist Edward Cope in 1869 from the Yadkin River in North Carolina and then essentially disappeared from the scientific record for over a hundred years until these fish from the Oconee River led to its rediscovery and really the beginning of this now 20-year recovery effort. Georgia Power became involved with Robust Red Horse because the fish was actually discovered in the Oconee River below one of our hydro plants during a relicensing project. Uh, so from a, a dam owner perspective, that can be a little interesting. All of a sudden, this fish species that nobody's seen for 100 years that may in fact be in jeopardy is now in our tail race and ultimately affects the way that we operate. So Georgia Power has been in, involved since the very beginning. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Georgia Department of Natural Resources, and Georgia Power collaboratively developed an agreement called a Candidate Conservation Agreement with Assurances, or CCAA, uh, to aid in the recovery of the robust red horse. Uh, broadly speaking, CCAAs are one tool in our toolbox that we can collectively use to recover these at-risk species. Uh, CCAAs are a pre-listing recovery approach, uh, meaning that the service works with our non-federal partners uh, to conserve these at-risk species before they're listed under the Endangered Species Act. Um, and specifically speaking for the robust red horse CCAA, we had two main objectives. The first objective was to establish a new population uh, within the historic range of the species, and that's where we are today, the Oak Mulgee River, Georgia. Uh, and the second objective was to uh, contribute to the understanding uh, of the uh, habitat use and life history requirements uh, of the fish. When the robust red horse was first discovered, it qualified for listing, but because of the urgency of the need for conservation, a pre-listing recovery approach was decided as the course of action. We've gone from one population to six populations, and those populations seem to be in really good shape. So uh, the need for listing is much less now than it was when we found the animal initially. The Candidate Conservation Agreement is a good vehicle for formalizing the work to be done in any conservation action. In this particular case, we had a very large group of partners and stakeholders, each doing uh, various uh, conservation measures. Like, uh, like all species, you know, the robust dead horse is, you know, the legacy of millions of years of evolution and struggle and that, that, that would be a tragedy to lose. I mean, we cannot afford to lose any more species. I mean, if our ecosystems can't support a diversity of species, then at some point maybe they would not be able to support us. The question that we're often asked is, is it worth it? Was it worth engaging in this and putting forth a lot of effort and a lot of money up front in order to ultimately or hopefully protect the species? Well, the reality is from a business perspective, yes, because there's a lot more risk and uncertainty in the future than there is in knowing what your costs are. So while we may spend thousands of dollars on conservation activities. Now it's a lot less risky than finding out 10 years down the road that we have a significant endangered species issue that could be costly orders of magnitude greater than what we've spent already. So definitely from a business perspective, dealing with the known is much cheaper than dealing with the unknown.